Hello, hello, welcome to Solving with AWS Solutions, your deep dive in architectures built by AWS that are ready to deploy instantly in the cloud. I'm Rob, your host, joined today with a woman who likes sequels better than the original. Hey, Rakshana, how are you doing? Hey, doing awesome, Rob. How's it going for you? Not bad. So today we are talking about Operations Conductor. What exactly does this solution do? So Operations Conductor, or Ops Conductor, enables customers to automate their operational tasks through a simple UI by configuring event or time-based triggers for managing their resources. So what does this mean for customers? So one of our key pillars in the AWS well-architected framework is focused on operational excellence. Here, we recommend that customers perform operational procedures as code and automate them. So customers across all industries tell us they find it challenging to do this at enterprise scale. Can you imagine thousands of resources across multiple accounts and regions? But don't worry, Ops Conductor solves this business problem by enabling customers to automate their operational tasks easily. That's pretty cool, so let's take a closer look at Ops Conductor. Let's do it. All right, Rakshana, Ops Conductor, talk to me about some of the design considerations for it. Sure, but actually before we go into that, I want to talk about important solution concepts. Okay. Yeah, so we have two main things, actions and tasks. Okay. Actions are pre-configured and those are what comes along with the deployment of the solution. Okay. And an example could be, you know, EC2 create snapshot, EC2 copy snapshot, so on and so forth. And we've set those up as part of the solution itself. Exactly. And an important point is that these actions are essentially automation documents. Mm -hmm. They hold the logic for what tasks are required to be run. And these automation documents are all on AWS Systems Manager, uh, which is our engine behind Ops Conductor. So what's a task then? So a task is when you configure these actions to perform on your specific resources in your specific accounts. Okay, can I have multiple actions per task? It's a one-on-one -on -one relation. So you take a specific action and you configure that to do your specific task and you can do further configuration on it like, you know, you can choose to run it on a specific schedule or, you know, on a specific event when, say, my CPU threshold has hit and I want to run this automation task. I got it, I got it. So how does that fit into the architecture then of Ops Conductor? Yeah, so let's talk about the solution design. So I'm on the solution landing page and uh, getting into the architecture diagram. When you deploy the solution, you're going to have an Ops Conductor UI, okay. which is going to help you create these tasks from our action catalog and basically automate these and run it on your resources. This is the front end where I'm configuring, creating that relationship between the tasks and the actions. Exactly. Okay. Yep. That's all. So it's powered by AWS Amplify, which is our development platform to build mobile and uh, web applications. Okay. And it's going to be hosted on an Amazon simple storage service, S3 bucket, and it's going to be sitting behind a cloud front for content delivery network. Typical front end then. So exactly. how does yep. that interface with the services itself? Yeah, so there are going to be a lot of Lambda functions sitting in the background. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a user microservice, which is going to allow you to you know, manage your user access to the UI. Okay. It allows you to invite, edit, delete users. Then we have an action microservice, which basically takes these automation documents from AWS Systems Manager and applies the key and the values for the document tags, okay. which is how those documents get pulled into Ops Conductor. Got it. Yeah. And the important thing about that is the next time you create your own action in your uh, AWS Systems Manager, as long as you apply the key and the value, this Lambda is going to pull that into your Ops Conductor UI. Good, that's streamlining it then. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And then we have the task microservice, which helps you create, edit, and delete tasks on the UI. Okay, cool. Right? So the important thing here is that when you create a task on the UI, and you can create a task based on a schedule or a given event, as I mentioned before, but when you create a task, a new CloudFormation template gets created and deployed into your Amazon S3 bucket. So we're automating the creation of those templates, but we have to apply them? Do customers apply them? Yeah, customers will have to deploy the template okay. once they create the task. Okay. This is basically that task-specific template. Makes and, sense. Yep, yeah, and okay. customers will have to deploy it in every region in which they want the resources to run the automation tasks. Okay, got it. Um, so what else is happening? So when you create a task, the next step is a resource selector lambda function mm -hmm. is going to be triggered, which is going to queue up all your operational tasks that you have selected to be performed on your specific resources. Mm -hmm. And it's going to send these messages to an Amazon simple queue service. All right, and from SQS, it's going to be sent to a queue consumer Lambda function, which is going to take in all that information and run the automation for you. That's actually conducting a lot of this stuff. Exactly, yep. Okay. This is going to be triggered whenever an event happens 
based on a CloudWatch event rule. And it's going to take in all the automation documents from AWS Systems Manager, apply all these you know, task-specific configuration that you as a user had given, and it's going to run, conduct the operations. Awesome. So Rakshana, we have lots of actions we could create and associate with a task. Can you walk me through an example of vertical scaling for an EC2 instance? Yeah, sure. So I've completed a deployment of operations conductor. I'm going to walk you through that UI. No tasks so far, but you can basically no, use. No, we're getting started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can use this to create your tasks as well as add and invite other users, manage other users. Okay. I invited you, Rob. Didn't you join? I'll get to it. I'll get to it. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about tasks. So the, all of the magic starts when you click on Get Started. Okay. So this is going to take you to your Actions Catalog. So these are all predefined as part of the solution itself. Exactly. These are all what we have predefined for you, but you can definitely go customize and add more actions okay. as automation documents in Systems Manager. It will be pulled over here. So these are the actions. How do I tie this to a task? Yeah, so you can create the task from here. Uh, here, let me create the resize instance. OK. All right. So I'm going to click on this. All right. So I'm trying to create the resize instance task. Mm -hmm. So let's go through the step-by-step -step procedure. So I have to give a task name and description. So this particular task will be resizing an EC2 instance based upon some parameters. Yep. It's going to be based on, on CPU utilization of okay. whether it's high or low. Awesome. All right. So we're naming the task. Exactly. Then you'll have to give a target tag for the task. OK. Uh, this is probably one of the most important steps. So this is any tag that you want to create. But once you create the task, you will have to go and apply this tag to all of the resources on which you want to run the operation So this is task. what's tying this together to the actual exactly. workloads. OK, yep. makes sense. Yep. So give a name, give a target name. And then you can give the complete range of instances mm -hmm. with which you want to you know, resize, go up or down, depending on the utilization. Gotcha. And this is now the thresholds that you were talking about earlier. So if it falls below or goes mm -hmm. above, now we're seeing where that thresholds come through. Yep. And then the next step is you can choose to create your task to happen either based on a schedule or based on an event. OK, so this one's five hours, it looks like. Yeah, so I'm going to do it based on a schedule of every five hours it's going to check. OK. And then the fun part here is you can choose any number of accounts and any number of regions on which you want to run your operations tasks on. So if I have multiple accounts, we could apply them here and, yeah. not have, and have one task for multiple accounts. Exactly. You don't have to worry about your multi-account environment. We'll manage it for you. Just make sure you deploy that specific task template in every account and every region. That's awesome. So this seems like a great way to consolidate and help conduct a lot of the operations for your workloads. Exactly. That's awesome. Thanks, Rakshana. Thanks, Rob. So Ops Conductor takes the operational burden away from customers so that they could focus on innovating and delivering cutting edge applications at high velocity. That's right. As a result, you'll be able to reduce operational complexity, achieve effective resource and cost management, limit human error, and enable your systems to respond consistently to events. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and deploy Ops Conductor from our AWS Solutions website.